ready. Welcome in folks, Chris Elliott here for HL TV Sports and I'm super excited to bring you our debut episode of HL TV Sports with Chris Elliott. We're coming to you from Twin Peaks Kirby right here in the heart of H-Town. Let me tell you what, today's going to be all about me as the host of this show and we're going to tell you about what the show is going to be like going forward. Chris Elliott, hey I'm originally from Baton Rouge, Louisiana so all things LSU sports is in my DNA. But the old adage, I got here as quick as I could, is true. I've been in Houston for pretty much my whole, whole entire adult life. At the age of four, I got here, and I am a true diehard H-Town sports fan. We're talking Love You Blue, the Rockets, the Astros. And one thing that Houston fans have somewhat become known for around the country is being fair weather fans. Well, that's not who you're looking at right here. I'm going to support my team from the beginning to end through good and bad, thick and thin. I was a season ticket holder for the Oilers back at the very end, and we were one of the very few. I think I was 20 years old, and this was literally right before they left. Season ticket holder for the Rockets at the age of 22, 21, and there's a story behind that that you're going to need to hear all about. The show format is going to be, we're going to try to hit all Houston sports. That's local sports, youth sports, college, and pro. And we're gonna bring you the community element. We're gonna take it all the way down to the grassroots level. We're gonna find the human element in each story and, and tie it together with sports. Because sports, as most people have been involved with it, they know it's a microcosm of life. When I say diehard, true Houston fan, if I had a dollar for every time when I'm yelling at the TV that my family said, they can't hear you, Dad, or they can't hear you, honey, I could probably afford season tickets to one of these pro sports teams. So I'm that true fanatic. My background is not in sports broadcasting. My background is being a true fan. Now let me tell you a bit about my sports background, broadcasting background. About five years ago, I got a wild hair and I contacted a local internet-based high school sports broadcasting outfit and the, I contacted them on OU Texas Weekend back five years ago on a Saturday and on the following Thursday not only was I on the air I was on the radio doing high school sports high school football and I've been doing that for the past five years play-by-play -play and color color commentary so that's who I am let me tell you a little bit about the show we hit on it a little bit we're gonna we're gonna hit all the sports as much as we can we're gonna hit the pro level you can't hit the pro level here in Houston without talking about the Houston Astros of course World Series champions, the Texans. We're in the middle of a season with the Texans and the Rockets have just gotten underway, a successful start. We're gonna hit the college teams, U of H, Rice, HBU. And let me tell you folks, we want you to contact us. You can hit us up on our Facebook page at ATEL TV Sports at, with Chris Elliott or find us at the below email address. We wanna hear your story. We wanna come talk to you, your kids, your coaches, we want to hear about it and we want to tell the world about it. All right, folks, we're going to take a, a deeper dive into me as a Houston sports fan. We're going to start with Love You Blue. I'll tell you what, folks, growing up in Houston, you didn't have a choice. You were an Oiler fan and they weren't the best team record wise or on the field, but they drew a very passionate fan. The whole Love You Blue marketing theme was brilliant because everybody I knew had the full on Love You Blue regalia. The, the Columbia blue hat, even the feather boa across the hat. And those were lean days back in the late 70s, early 80s. Now we had Earl Campbell and that crew and they made it to the AFC Championship twice only to break our hearts. I hit on earlier, the Houston fans are known as being fair weather fans. We didn't have championships here in this town. AFL Championship just wasn't the same thing. In fact, most of us weren't even born during those days. So when the Oilers had their successful run in the late 70s and early 80s, we were all about it. Unfortunately, from that point on, we didn't have much success as Oilers fans until the early 90s when we brought in those teams and we were known as the best team on paper in the NFL. Fortunately, again, we, we only had our hearts broken, disappointed. 
the Buffalo Bills game. I hate to even bring it up because it still tugs at your heartstrings for a diehard Oiler fan. And then we can all remember Joe Montana and his swan song with the Chiefs coming in and eliminating that 93 Oilers team, which was on paper supposed to be the best team in the league. The Oilers left us. And I get in trouble with folks that I tell them the Oilers are dead. The Oilers left us. They ripped our hearts out. They're gone though. They're the Titans. No one likes the Titans. If you were an Oiler fan and you became a Titan fan, God bless you, but you're not a Houston fan. Sorry, the Oilers are gone. We did nothing wrong as fans for the Oilers to be taken from us, but the Oilers are gone. Now we got the Texans, 2002. They've been here 15 years. They've been competitive. They haven't got to where they need to get. We're going to unpack that, break it down, talk about why that is later in the show. But, hey, most of us true diehard Oiler fans, we transitioned, both feet in, jumped in, and are full Texans fans. But we're passionate about football here in Texas. Football is religion here in Texas. If it's not being done right, you're going to hear from us, and we want it to be done right. The time is now. I do give the, the Texans some credit. They finally, after 15 years, went out of their way to get a franchise quarterback. They took some criticism when they did it because they paid a lot to get it. But as we've seen here in the early part of this season, Deshaun Watson is the real deal. Should surprise nobody when on the biggest stage at the collegiate level, he took Alabama to the brink his junior year, or his first year, I should say, in the BCS, what's now the national championship game. And, and then, of course, last year he took him to the brink and got over the hump in beating Alabama. Alabama is filled with NFL talent. So if, you can, if he can do it there, we should have known he could do it here. Now we are faced with a huge injury by Deshaun Watson, or on behalf of Deshaun Watson, a huge letdown, if you will. The season was not on a great trajectory, but you could see the light at the end of the tunnel. The Texans were on the path to going somewhere. Let's talk. We're going to transition to the Rockets. Rockets, a couple years ago, they make it to the Western Conference Final with what some would con have considered an a, a, a inferior roster. Despite that, they got all the way there and ended up being eliminated. The year following that was a disaster. They somewhat tore the team apart, put it back together last year, and had a good run last year. James Harden, the beard. He's the man, should have gotten MVP last year. You don't put up those stats and be on a better team than was Russell Westbrook, in my opinion, and not win the MVP. He didn't win it. We got bounced in the playoffs. They rebuild. For me, I've begun to sour on the NBA, and here's why. Number one, the product on the floor, in my opinion, is inferior to what it was back in the heyday. When I say heyday, the 90s. The bad boys, the bulls, the rockets. Now everything is one-on-one. -on -one. Let's isolate, let's go one-on-one. -on -one. That's not basketball. The teams that won in the, in the early and mid-2000s, San Antonio Spurs, yeah, they had superstars, but they had a team concept. They played team basketball. In the middle of that, and even before that, the Pistons, those Pistons teams, they had a team game. Nowadays, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Now I say that, the Warriors play team basketball. This is a team that leads the league in scoring or thereabouts, but they lead it in assists. And to me, that's a pretty key stat. So I, I am somewhat partial in, in a true basketball sense to the Warriors in that they play team basketball. The other part is now, we, now it's turned into fantasy basketball. And this is gonna include the Warriors. Now everybody's stacking their teams, including the Rockets. They bring in Chris Paul, we got one of the best seat coming off one of the best seasons for a point guard in NBA history, point guard air quotes for James Harden, leading the league in assists. Again, the team was top one of the top teams scoring. And then you add to that a point guard, Chris Paul, who a lot of people don't know this. Chris Paul is one of the best defensive point guards in the NBA. He's up there in the, in the, in the league in steals and assists. He's going to help them build the team around two superstars, but it's still going to come down to get to that next level. And specifically to get past the Warriors, it's got to be that team approach. D'Antoni came in, upbeat, high-scoring team. It worked. 
but is it enough to get to the next level? So we'll hit on that throughout the show and see if, if they can do it, see if they're good enough to win the West. And then it, the elephant in the room, folks, is the Astros, World Series champions. May have even got some goosebumps there. It's still hard for me to believe the Houston Astros, after all these years, finally won a World Series championship. And there are so many stories in the middle of all that, ups and downs in, in a, within a given game, ups and downs within a given series, and of course, ups and downs throughout the season. Human element. There are so many guys that weren't even on the Astros up until the last two or three years, and that team has come into a true family. It is a family in that locker room. Even the guys added towards the end of the season, Verlander, Liriano, Cameron Mabin. They come in, it's like they've been there all year and maybe been there for a few years. It's a family affair over there. Credit goes to Jeff Lunau, before that Jim Crane, and of course A.J. Hintz, as they did a great job managing personalities, managing turmoil, if you will. There was a bit of a, not a controversy, but a, a Houston fans had a problem with a lack of trade activity at the deadline. We got Lariano, and a lot of people just thought that, thought that was somewhat of a minimal ad. Well, Lunau, in his infinite wisdom, post-trade deadline, is able to bring in Mabin and, of course, Justin Verlander. And that, that addition, as many will agree, that really put the team over the top. And the team knew it. The team had a renewed uh, energy and the team knew that with a guy like Verlander running out there every four to five days, that they can win a series, and they proved it, eliminating Mount Rushmore of Major League Baseball. We're talking about the Red Sox, Yankees, and the Dodgers. I don't even know who the fourth team would be on Mount Rushmore. Maybe the Cubs, but you know they just won the first title in, what, 100 years last year. Hey, congrats to them. They did the same thing last year, really, that the Astros did in that they got a gigantic monkey off their back. But the Astros are the talk of the town now. I would be remiss if we didn't talk in this show about we've hit on the community element, but what does that mean? And what does that mean for Houston? Well, here in the last couple, three months, that means responding to Hurricane Harvey. And Hurricane Harvey, for me, wasn't a hurricane story. Hurricane Harvey for me was a humanity story. You don't know anybody that hadn't had their homes affected. More than likely, each and every one of you watching me right now helped somebody muck out, that's a brand new term post Harvey, muck out of their house. The community came together. Strangers from around the, the region, the Cajun Navy, God love them. They came in, they didn't even hesitate. They didn't ask questions. They just hooked their boats up and headed east on, or headed west rather, on I-10. And they were here until the, the work was done. Folks came from Waco all throughout Texas, not because they were asked to come, because they wanted to come. And that energy, that sense of community has carried on. And the pro sports teams have gobbled that up. We all know the man, Justin James, J.J. Watt, 20 million just by hitting a few clicks on his smartphone, 20 million dollars. And that's going straight back into the community. The Astros ate it up. The community ate the Astros up at a time when they needed to eat something up of, of positive force in their life. And man, I don't know if we as fans carried them to the World Series or they, they carried us through some heartache, through some turmoil through Hurricane Harvey. So Houston's strong and the community sense here in Houston has never been stronger. So I talked to you a little bit about the Houston Rockets and I told you I was a season ticket holder at the age of 22 years old and man have I got a story for you. Those that know me know this story. Me and two other buddies we split a season package, mini plan if you will in the upper deck at the old summit right down the street here from Twin Peaks Kirby. And the most beautiful thing about that was, first of all, we knew the Rockets were good. They're leading up to those seasons, they were competitive. Dream, Akeem Olajuwon, still to this day, I'll sit and argue with whoever wants to sit with me. Akeem Olajuwon is the greatest basketball player ever to play. I'd be happy to argue with anybody who wants to go there. 
So we knew that the Rockets were close. So we got the playoff ticket package came in and we had a draft. Me and my two buddies, we had to de determine who's getting what game. And yes, it went all the way to game seven. Fortunately, I was able to get the clinching game for the Utah in the Western Conference Finals where they gave Dream his, I think one of his only two league MVP awards. And I was at game seven against the Knicks. And our beloved Mad Max, Vernon Maxwell, hit a three-pointer with a little bit over a minute to go and put us up, I want to say 10 or 11. So from the upper deck, something clicked, and I said, let's go. Grab my buddy Javi, we went down. We went over the boards in the lower prom at the summit, and we're on the floor. By this time, we're now 15 or 20 seconds left. Security guards are lining the edge of the summit floor, and the security guards are facing inward, so they weren't watching me and I told the security guard when the game ends I'm going under your arms and sure enough the game ended the team celebrated dream grabbed that last loose ball ran on the floor and fortunately the NBC footage got a shot of me hugging Rudy T just after Earl Curitan who doesn't recognize me of course he wouldn't pushes me off of him and so Rudy kind of pushes or hugs me. Earl Curitan pushes me off. This was the first year that the NBA decided to do the trophy presentation on the court. So I get grabbed by a security guard. He almost dislocated my shoulder. Still a little sore here years, years later. But I got separated from my buddy Javi. So they do the trophy presentation on the floor. It was awesome. I don't know, five, five 10, 15 minute presentation well that when that ended I went back under the ropes and was whisked into the locker room behind Sam Cassell and Sam Cassell was a young man at that time and we've all seen the Astros celebration where they've got the giant ski goggles on folks if you haven't had champagne get in your eyes it stings like you know what so I'm behind Sam he's spraying champagne everywhere we walk into the old summit locker room and the configuration of the Summit locker room may have led to them doing the trophy presentation on the floor because it's a, basically a bunch of halls. It didn't look like your local country club. Well, anyway, they finally say, you get, we're going to do an interview. You guys need to get out of there. When they say you guys, they were talking primarily to the media. And as a 22-year-old season ticket holder, I was not a member of the media. They whisk me out, and my buddy Javi tells the story. He looks down at the tunnel, and I'm walking out of the locker room with my arm around Marv Albert, and I had a couple goodies under my arm that we'll tell you about later. And so that is my what I call my 15 frames of fame, is when the NBC footage came across there. And to cap this story off, my wife Kimberly has been in the sports television industry for quite a while, and she had the opportunity to interview Rudy T., and one of my prized possessions, he signed the still image of that footage, and it says, to Chris, thanks for the hug, Rudy T. And so that's my 15 frames of fame with the Rockets, and I will never forget those moments. And I even went the next year, the first, first game of the season, and got a commemorative ring. Let me tell you what, folks. It's been a pleasure bringing to you the debut episode of HLTV Sports with Chris Elliott. It's going to be an awesome season here. We're going to have guests, we're going to go on location, and we're going to bring Houston sports to you. So check your listings, find us on the over 20 digital media platforms. You'll find HLTV Sports also on social media at HLTV Sports with Chris Elliott. And we're pumped to bring you season one. Are you ready?